So this will be a first example in how to actually program with functions. Uh, how many of you have done C++ functions before? So looks like about 10 of you, uh, so uh, well less than half. So I'll, I'll take some time to explain this a little bit. Um, one of the things you'll find different, because a lot of you I think have done Java in high school before, so in Java is a little bit different than it is in C++ in that typically what you do is you actually do what's called a variable or function declaration separate from a definition. The declaration is the first line that you get in a function which says its return type, the name of the function, uh, and any parameters. The definition is what's the body, what, what actually the code you write inside the function. So just to get started, so you see what I'm talking about, let's actually start by uh, declaring a function. So you typically what you do is declaration of functions happens before your main function. Um, so I'm going to create a new function here called, um, it's going to return nothing. And if I want it to return nothing, it's going to be called void is the return type. If I want to return an int, I would have typed int here or whatever. Um, we saw when we did our examples of predefined functions, we saw returns, how return types worked. For example, a random returned a random number, an integer. Um, so we're going to call this hello, and we're going to take a string here called name. And that's going to be the function declaration. So we'll type it properly. Hello is the name of the function. Void is the return type. And it takes in one parameter called name, which is a type string. Now, what library do we need to include to use string here? We need to include the string library, yes. So we've done that. So this is our declaration. Now, what we typically do is we do our definition after the main function. And I'll explain why this is a little, in a little bit. But um, So for the definition, we repeat this first line. But instead of putting a semicolon at the end, we actually put our open brace and close brace. And then we'll put our, our definition. We'll put the actual behavior in here. So what I'd like it to do is I'm going to make this a really simple function just to get us started. And I'm going to do a cout statement, which is used for output. I'm going to say cout hello name. And I'll do an end line here too. So we, uh, first we have the function declaration. Below we have the function definition. OK? The third thing, what's the third thing we need with a function? We actually have to use it, right? So we have to have what's called a function call. So a function call is when we had predefined functions, the declaration and definition, they were in library files that we, we actually included. Now what we're doing, and we only did the function call for the predefines. When we're doing programmer-defined functions, we're not only calling the functions ourselves, but we're also defining and declaring them as well. So if we want to use this hello function, can someone give me an example of how we would use this as a call? Yeah? You want to volunteer your first name for this? Uh, Spencer. Spencer. Right. And if we wanted to do this call it again for somebody else. We could do that. Anyone else want to volunteer? Michael? And we also want to do hello John, someone said. Any females want to volunteer first name? What? Any volunteers? Right here, we have, what's your name? Rebecca, okay, do you mind if I put that in? Do you mind if I include that? Okay, so we also have hello, Rebecca. Great, so that is an example of we have it declared, we have the function defined, and we have actually here four function calls. So if we now go in here, we've saved this, 
if we now go and type G++ and we type programmer, oh, did you guys know in Linux that if you start typing the name of your file and you press tab, what happens? It, uh, fills it, out for you. it will auto-complete it, if, but if it turns out, for example, with P, like that we have multiple files named P, so if we type it, it'll only go as far as PR, and if we press it again, it'll tell us, hey, we have two options, predefined functions and programmer-defined functions. So if we type PRO, there's only one name there, so if we press tab, it completes the name for us, so we don't have to do the full typing. So if we type G++ programmer functions example one and press enter, it will actually compile for us. And then if we type dot slash a dot out, it will print all the messages. Make sense? Okay. Cool. So it turns out you actually don't need to, declarations are more a preference to do you can actually do your declaration and definition together in C++. So but if you did got rid of the declaration here what would happen if I compiled this? Anyone know? Yeah, and what were you going to say? Uh, pretty much that. Okay, so and if we want to recompile this program and see what would happen, we can use the up arrow here in Linux to actually cycle up through the previous command. So dot slash a dot out and g plus plus. So we can easily, if we have errors, we don't have to type that whole g plus plus every time. We can just press the up arrow to recompile. So what does it tell us? We get four errors here, and all of them are the same. They basically tell us when we get to the H and hello Spencer, the, and hello Michael, hello John, and hello Rebecca, we can see that it says error, use of an undeclared identifier. What does that mean? <laughs> well, we declared hello, but we declared it here. It runs main first. It runs main first. So C++, it's like, when, think of it like when you're reading a book, right? If you're reading a book and all of a sudden they just use a name of a character you've never been introduced in the book, you're like, who is that? So uh, what you typically, though, in, in the compiler needs you to declare and tell it all the names first. So it needs to know that hello function exists. So when it gets here, it doesn't know what hello is. It doesn't know that you've defined that function. Because the function declaration and definition, when we do it like this, happens after. Now, what if we had done this? Put it first. What would happen now? If we compile it. Who thinks this will compile? Who thinks it will give an error? Who has no idea? Okay, and about 60% of you are reserving judgment until after you see it work. Okay, so let's compile it. It's fine. Why is it fine now? Because We've actually declared and defined hello all at once, and we've done it before that, right? Yes? That was what I was just going to ask you. What's the benefit to doing it separately? Well, it turns out you can use, it's really a challenge, because what about if you have a, if you actually just include all the definitions, you have to constantly make sure you order functions in a way that any function they call gets defined before, right? And when you're dealing with main, that's easy, but in general that can get really complicated. So the general practice is is that what you do is you put all your definitions at the bottom and before you just do a whole list of declarations at the top. And that way it reads all the declarations first and then all the uses of them which happen in the definitions are after. So by doing the declarations first, you always ensure the compiler knows the name of the function when you try to use it. So that's our basic function example. Now there's also something in C++ allows you to do function overloading. Now so an example of function overloading um, of the hello function. What does a function overload mean? Yes. 
Yeah, so you can have a function overloaded when you have the same name for the function, but you have typically different parameters, right? So for example, let's look at our hello function. What about if rather than just having a name, we wanted to have string f name, string l name, right? So this is basically the same thing. And I'm going to take the definition down here I have of hello. For those of you who are typing right now, I'm just going to copy this. And I'm going to paste it and modify it to be first name and last name, only because that's quicker than typing it out. So this is hello with two parameters. And this is going to be definition of hello with one parameter. And now I'm going to do f name, a space, l name, like that. OK? So for example, now if we go back up in John, we've, we now see we have hello, declare twice and define twice. The first case it has one parameter, the second case it has two. Spencer? Oh, right here? Yeah. Um, OK. My general approach is, so what I'm showing you, in, because this is an introductory course, there are times where uh, there are variations you can do. Uh, I'm typically showing you the most common way of doing things. If you're interested in knowing those things, we'll answer your question in a second. I'll, I'll just tell you. But uh, if you're interested in knowing these things, what I'd encourage you to do is, if you're wondering, so the question Spencer asked was, can we actually just do this? Declare it with the types and then actually put the names in down below when we do the definition. So if you want to know that kind of question, try it out, right? Like I'd encourage you to try variations on these program um, to answer questions. So I think it's a great question, but I'd encourage you to try these things out. If you, you know, especially if you're a student who you've seen some of this stuff before, if you want to understand some of those things, give them a try. Michael? Okay, uh, you're getting, that's a code style thing. I'm going to be actually doing code style next class. So we're going to, and, and what I'd like to do is there are different styles you can use. Um, and I would encourage you to um, think about that a little bit. I'll show you some examples. And what we'll do is we'll actually, um, we'll make a decision about what style we want to follow in the class. Okay. As of right now, I've pretty much left it up to you and said as long as your variable names actually have something that tells me what they're for, I'm okay with it. Now, if we don't need the variable name here, why do you put it in? Or why do I put it in? It's a readability thing. If somebody, if you put in F name, L name, do you think you understand? Does that tell you something about what those variables are for? Yeah, yeah it, it, plus if you assume that there's a first name and a last name, what about if I put L name as the first parameter and F name? You can't tell which order. So what I like is as a declaration, I think of a declaration as well as so when you're programming, a declaration is something you can use to understand how to use a function, how to call it. Right? You don't need to look at a definition to understand how to call something. So I like to provide full information in my declaration so that somebody can quickly look at this and understand how this function works. So I prefer to put the variable names in because I think it's a better practice from readability perspective of the code. If, especially for you, even if you're the only one programming it, if you worked like in your lab, if you worked it on Monday and didn't come back to it until Thursday, if you've done these things, it makes it easier to understand what you already did. Okay? So if we want to see how this works, um, we now have two hello functions, one with one parameter, one with two. So we can see here if we wanted to do John Doe, like this. We can now compile this and run it and it prints out hello Spencer, hello Michael, hello John Doe, hello Rebecca. How did it know which one of these hello functions to call for which one? Yeah?
Yeah, so what it looks at here is it looks at the fact that in this case you have one parameter which is a string. It then matches that to the declaration and says, hey, you're calling this hello function. This case we have two strings, John and Doe, and it matches it to this one. So <coughs> overloading works by allowing you to have multiple functions with different numbers of parameters and uh, it will actually allow you to select, it will automatically decide which one based on the parameters you have. It's not just the different numbers of parameters either, it could be different types. Like I could have, for example, a hello which has a first name and a number, right? And another one which has a first name and a last name. It just has to, it could have different numbers of parameters or different types of parameters of the same number, okay? One thing though you can't do is you can't have, for example, string name and then have another hello int id, okay? And, or let's say string, oh sorry, let me do it this way. You can do that, but I was thinking of a string name and a different type where it returns a boolean. Why couldn't you do that? No, I could, I'm just saying, like, what about if I had done this and then did bool here and then did C out hello and then I return true? It cannot, yeah, it's, you're, if I compile this, it will give me an error because it won't know which hello to call because one of the things is you're not required in C++ to specify, for example, you're not, re you're not required to specify the return type like this. You can call functions that return something and not have a value here and they don't, re the return does value just doesn't go anywhere. So you don't have to save the return value. So the thing here is if you compile this, this will not actually work because it can't tell. All it knows is it knows that you have one parameter here. It doesn't know which one you're calling here. Are you calling the one with the boolean return or the one with no return? So let's actually just compile this and see what happens just to be sure. Two errors generated. And if you see here, the first thing it tells you is return functions that differ only in their return type cannot be overloaded. Right? Previous declaration. So it basically tells you this is not allowed. 